Hey guys, today we're going to be unpacking one of the questions that we get asked the most in regards to sim racing pedals. It is. We are looking at the Acetec Sim Sports Forte load cell pedals versus the Husink Velt Sprints. So as a lot of you guys would know, we already have some very detailed review videos on the Sprint pedals, the Ultimate Plus pedals, the Victor pedals, and of course our first look video where we took a look at the prototype of the Forte pedals. And so what we found is that the retail version that we have here, the driving experience is basically the same as what we had with the prototype yep. version, which is great because every Everything we said in that detailed review of the prototypes is valid for these. That's right. So yeah, other than just a couple of very, very small differences, which we will of course cover in today's video, there was very little difference at all. So we will mention those today and let you know exactly what they were. So without further ado, let's put the sprints up against the Fortes and see which one we think is going to be the better match for you. Let's go. Okay, so before we get started here, let's just quickly cover off those differences between the final retail version and the uh, prototype version, which we looked at previously. So there were three differences here. Two of them are purely cosmetic, just the cable management and the type of cable that's being used there is a little bit more tidy than previously. We also now have an injection molded plastic housing around the load cell instead of the 3D printed one. The most significant difference and the one that may have an impact on the driving experience, depending on how heavily footed you are, is that the Teflon ring around the bump stop has now been replaced with a rubber ring. Now what that means is that you get a final little bit of squish in the pedal before it mechanically locks and can't physically deflect the load cell any further. So it does give you that little bit of extra movement. Now when we did our testing, we weren't reaching that bump stop anyway. So it wasn't a problem or a significant thing for either of us. But it was important to just point that out because it will add a slightly smoother transition before you hit the maximum mechanical limit of the pedal should you do so as opposed to the prototype where it was pretty much a hard stop once you reach that point. Yeah, so why don't we start off with the overall build quality and yep. how they can Pair. So what is your initial impression of build quality between the two? Yeah, so I spent quite a bit of time, I guess, thinking through this and the comparisons between the two, putting this together. And what I think it ultimately boils down to is that you know, for the end user, you're, you're gonna be satisfied with either direction you go here. They're, they're fundamentally very different in their approaches. We've got mostly steel here on the on the Husingville pedals as opposed to cast aluminium for the majority of the construction of the Acetec pedals. But really in terms of the overall presentation and quality, I'd say they're pretty much neck and neck there. There's no obvious things. I mean, we could nitpick things like the exposed circuit board on the back of the sprint pedals, as opposed to the sealed unit on the Acetex. We could nitpick the fact that the toolless construction here makes adjustment a lot more easy on the Acetec pedals than it is on the sprint pedals, for example. So there's so many little things that you could drill into there. And I think really the best thing to do there is to just have a look at the full detailed reviews on both of those and decide for yourselves what is going to be most important to you. But I think what it ultimately boils down to is that the overall presentation and build quality is very similar similar between the two, despite the completely different approaches that they've taken. Yeah, well, at the end of the day, the build quality matters because of reliability That's right. and longevity and those yep. kind of things. And we haven't had any issues with either no. of these pedal sets after giving them plenty of workouts. Exactly. So, um, yeah. yeah, I think build quality on both of them is really good and you're not going to be disappointed in any yeah, way. I don't think that it's a determining factor between the two. I think it's going to come much more down to the driving experience and adjustability. Yeah. So on the subject of adjustability, yep. that's where things start to get a little bit different. A lot bit different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, um, yeah, you have way, 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 way more adjustability on the Houston Velt Sprints than you do on the Forte pedals. Yeah. That said, the maximum load limit on the Sprint pedals is a lot lower than it is on the Forte pedals. Now, one of the observations that we had during the review process is that I was perilously close to maxing out the load cell mm. on these at around sort of 65 kilograms of force. Now, I am a heavy footed breaker. I'm used to using the Invicta pedals and that's just my driving style. I like to have a relatively short throw and a relatively stiff pedal. Now, obviously everybody's gonna have their own personal preferences. Not everybody's gonna drive the same way as I do, thankfully. But, <laughs> um, but the, the important factor there is that you do have that limitation of the maximum range of the load cell on the sprints, whereas it's not likely to be a factor for the vast majority of people on the uh, on the Fortes. And I think that that sort of creates a clear upgrade path from the sprints to the Ultimate Plus pedals, for example, whereas the upgrade path from the Fortes to the Invicta pedals is a lot kind of stranger because there really mm. isn't a whole lot of difference between the two of them driving anyway. Yeah, it's just that little bit of cool factor that you get from the hydraulic feeling um, it's pretty subtle. It is very, you. very subtle, but um, mm. it is definitely there. And I'd suggest again, check out our full first look video on the Forte pedals if you want to see more of a comparison between these and the Invicta pedals. We really went into a lot of detail there. So I would say that the Forte brake is stiff. Yep. The sprint brake 
can be quite stiff. Yep, I'd say that's, <laughs> that's a fair way of saying but it. But this yeah. can also be soft as well. So. Exactly. So overall, you have way more adjustability. And we, I mean, we've only really sort of spoken about the brake so far. So let's sort of unpack that first. So this can go from having quite a large range of travel to a relatively stiff pedal feel. But even for me, I found that at the stiffest setting, I was probably wanting a little bit more. And that's where I'd sort of go, well, I'd probably want to upgrade to the ultimate pluses if I was looking at Husingville pedals. Whereas with the Forte pedals, it's kind of like, well, this is how stiff it is. There are softer rubbers that you can install. There is also an extended travel kit, which will be coming later on. And we'll definitely be taking a look at yeah. that. I have had a play with the prototype version for the Invicta pedals. And it didn't really suit my particular driving style, but it does definitely give you more travel overall. Okay, so with that, would you expect to be able to get this as soft as you can? I think you, yeah. you, you can, well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to say because at this point it's a prototype rubber yep. and we, we just don't know what their plans are exactly for an extended travel kit for the Forte, so I don't want to make any assumptions there. But I think ultimately if we were just talking about the stiffness of the brake pedal, this is very much a product that is designed for people which have a heavier foot, whereas this is designed for people that, you know, it's, it's going to cater for a much wider range of braking styles and it's going to suit a wider range of different types of cars because of that. So ultimately, I think for both of us, we were able to dial in exactly the kind of pedal feel that we like between both pedal sets and achieve a very, very similar feeling between both of them, really, ultimately. It was very hard to tell the difference. I guess the, the approach to the adjustment was where it was quite different. So on the sprint pedals, we had to work with installing various different types of shims and then adjusting preload to make sure that we were able to get that little bit of uptake in the pedal that we like. And then a nice clearly defined threshold point where we could always hit the same braking pressure every single time consistently. By contrast with the Forte pedals, it was a little bit more tricky to really get that feeling dialed in. Both of us like to have that little bit of uptake between the pad and the disc initially when we push down the pedal. So a little bit of not slack, but a little bit of uptake then your initial braking up to the threshold point and then your modulation beyond that. So almost like a three stage braking kind of feel, right? Yep. So you've got first stage uptake, second stage your initial braking up to the threshold, third stage where you're modulating around that maximum threshold and then trail braking coming off. Now with the Forte pedals because of their design, what we found is that if you wound the preload off the elastomer entirely, then the pedal just felt too loose. And what we were able to do to mitigate that was actually wind in the, uh, wind in the shaft on the clevis here to shorten that overall length and actually bind things together, stiffen up the overall feel. So we were able to achieve that, but it was a little bit less intuitive to do so. At face value here, you kind of think that you only have the adjustment here of the preload on the elastomer, and that's pretty much it. Whereas here, it's kind of a little bit more clear that you can adjust your preload, you can also adjust an assortment of different inserts as well. Yeah, so there's another spring in here, isn't there? That's that, right, that yeah. goes between the push rod and the load cell itself. So yeah. that gives it another amount of spring tension to play with, which is adjusted by the length of the, the push rod. That's right, yeah. So we'll elaborate a little bit more on this when we get into the driving experience later, but there is quite a lot of other points to cover in terms of adjustability here as well. So I guess to summarize our feelings overall with adjustability in the brake, ultimately we we're able to achieve a feeling that we both subjectively liked out of both sets of pedals. And I think objectively, all the elements that are necessary for you know good quality, good consistent braking is are present in both sets of pedals. You've got a good clearly defined threshold point there. You can feel your maximum braking pressure. You can modulate around it. And uh, yeah, I don't really think anybody's gonna have an issue with either pedal set, as long as you're not gonna be maxing out the load cell on the sprints. Yeah. So before we move on into talking about adjustment in terms of mechanical placement of the pedals, let's just talk a little bit about adjustment with relation to the feeling of the throttle and the clutch pedal. So for me, I felt very little difference between the two when they were adjusted to my personal preference. Would you agree with that? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I guess the main things you're looking for in a throttle and clutch are smoothness overall yep. and getting the right amount of tension that you want. And both of them are very smooth. Yep. And you've got your spring preload that you can adjust to adjust your tension. Exactly. <laughs> so adjustable throw as well. There was a, you know an acceptable amount of range on both of them. And then again with the clutch, very little difference there for me as well. Both of the pedals do have that two-stage effect. So you feel that sensation of the bite point where the flywheel mechanically connects to the drive line and the wheels get spinning. Now for me, when I'm driving, it's not something that I really notice anyway. So really the only time that that's gonna come into play is when you're launching cars. And yeah, again, for me, in my personal preference, what I like to feel, both pedals delivered a satisfactory result. I think also the main adjustment for those clutches is probably in the software and yeah. in where that bite point actually is. And yeah. they both handle that fine. Exactly, we'll talk about software in just a minute as well. But while we're still talking about adjustability here, I think one of the, well, probably the most significant difference between the two pedal sets comes down to mechanical adjustability and the ability to actually move things around 
on the rig itself. So the sprint pedals are sold either, as we said before, as a two pedal set or a three pedal set. You can buy the clutch individually later on if you want to. But each one of the individual pedals can be mounted separately, moved forward and back, moved side to side, pretty much infinitely, of course, depending on the rig that you're mounting it on. You don't have to use their base plate. That is an optional accessory should you need it. Plenty of people won't need that. So we've got adjustments from side to side, front to back, and of course they are very easy to mount inverted as well if you wish to do so. Now if we compare that with the Forte pedals, the base plate itself is actually fixed. So really the only adjustment you have in terms of placement relative to the base plate at least is just the ability to tilt forward and back and move the pedal pads from side to side. That's pretty much it with the Fortes. A lot more adjustability when it comes to the sprints. So I've spent quite a bit of time on my rig without a clutch pedal on there. Yeah. And what I like to do is have the throttle and the brake quite a long way apart so yep. that I've kind of got a straight line down my leg yep. to the brake pedal. I feel yep. like that gives me a bit more feeling in okay. the brake. And that's something that I can't do with, with yep. the Invictors or the Fortes. Yep. Uh, it's something I can do with the sprints and the Ultimates. Yep. Uh, it's yeah, it is a consideration for me because I really like having them quite separate. Yeah, and I'm glad that you mentioned that because that is something that we have seen come up quite a lot in various different forum posts, Facebook and so forth, is people saying that they wish they did have more side to tight adjustment. Now for me, I haven't found that to be an issue. As I said at the start of the video, I don't use a clutch very often, but I haven't found, I haven't even found the need, honestly, to move the pedal pads outwards spacing wise. So yeah, it's not like there's not enough room for your foot in between the pedals. Yeah. There's plenty of room for your feet there um, and you can bring them closer together if you've got tiny feet and want yep. them to be close. But uh, yeah, it's if you do want that extreme kind of thing. Yeah, and I guess maybe I underestimate Estimated how important that was going to be to some people because I kind of understated it when we did the review of the Invicta pedals. I kind of said I don't think it's going to be an issue for many people and I'm happy to put my hand up and say that obviously I was wrong there because a lot of people have been put off by that. <laughs> so for me it hasn't been an issue. I'm perfectly comfortable without being able to have them as a straight shot but yeah to some people it is a factor and it's definitely something that you can do with the sprints that you can't do with the Invictors or the Fortes so there is definitely that. So I think in summarizing adjustability it's fair to say that we were able to achieve a feeling for all three pedals on both pedal sets that was absolutely fine for both of us with no real sacrifices to speak of whatsoever but you have to say you'd have to say that the sprints have more overall adjustability than the Fortes do both when it comes to pedal feel with the brake it suits a wider range of different styles of driving but also in terms of placement on the rig as well. So moving on to the software now. Yep. Now, Husingvelt, they were a real standout amongst mm -hmm. other sim racing brands for quite a long time yep. because of the ability to flash your calibration to the pedals themselves mm -hmm. and that calibration stored on the pedals as yep. opposed to being a Windows thing. Yeah, so the advantage of that was the signal that's actually being outputted is a pre-calibrated signal and it's not relying on any sort of calibration within Windows itself to modify that signal. So it means that when you jump in a sim title, even if that sim title requires its own calibration, all you need to do is just push the pedals down to the maximum, return them to the minimum, and you're good to go. And that's something that we've absolutely loved ever since we reviewed the Ultimate Plus pedals with the new smart control software uh, almost a year ago now, I want to say. So we were really happy to see that kind of implementation on the AC tech pedals as well. Something that we haven't seen on a lot of other pedal sets, so definitely a standout feature there on both of them. And I think that overall, even though the approach and presentation is completely different between the two of them, they both achieve a pretty similar thing overall. Yeah, I think the Acer Tech software is a bit more slick looking. It's, yep. it's quite fancy. It's got that animation that I always go on about that I really like. Yep. It's just... It's it looks like it's been designed by a UI designer and not an engineer, whereas Husingvelt looks like it's been designed by an engineer and they don't really care about the, you know, the looks of it. Yeah, which is fine. Yeah, I mean, both of them are intuitive to use. Both of them achieve the same result easily mm. and without any confusion. It's just the Acetech software looks a little bit more, I guess, well presented. Yeah, and it does it does give you a lot of confidence that they, it is a well-written bit of software, just yeah. in how smooth the, the software operates. Now, one important point of difference there is that the Husingvelt software at this point in time does allow you to save and import profiles. So you can mm. save them, send them to your mates, download your mates' profiles, chop and change, load different profiles of different cars and so forth. Yeah. Yeah, surely they'll bring that to us. They've Tech told us soon. that they are bringing it, okay. but at this point in time, it's not available. Yeah, so okay. that is definitely some one area of advantage of the Husingvelt pedals at this point in time. Yep. But we know that it will be coming to the Acertex as well. Yep. But then also when you look at the wider potential ecosystem of Acertex, yep. you'll have the one bit of software 
to master all bits of gear in your system. That's correct. Um, as yeah. opposed to using Velt, that's not going to be part of a wider ecosystem. It's just going to yeah. be the, the software for your pedals. That's right, yeah. So with Acer Tech, they are bringing out a wider ecosystem. So they'll have wheels, they'll have bases, they'll potentially even have things like motion systems down the road as well. So you'll have that one piece of software which controls absolutely everything. And yeah, I think that is definitely going to be something that will be significant to a lot of people. So. Yeah, and that's really exciting, I think, because it is such a well-written bit of software to yeah. see how that integrates into a wheelbase, yeah. for example, that's really quite cool. Yeah, I mean, one of the big frustrations that we have with our triple screen rig that we use for all our racing videos is that we've got so many different software packages running for all the different elements. Yeah, yeah. And it's literally like a 15 minute checklist to go through and make <laughs> sure that everything's working every time we yeah. fire it up. And although that is an extreme scenario, a lot of people will have similar frustrations, different software for the oh, wheel. Oh, we've all been there with Crew Chief. Yeah, I mean, just the other day <laughs> I set up to record a race and forgot to load Ultimate Game Tech for the Cube Controls wheel. Oh, no. So I didn't have any telemetry on my wheel. And then I started up UGT Manager and it killed my force feedback. So then I had to start the race and I had no force yeah, feedback. Right, so right. You know, little things like that can be very frustrating. And I think that having a software package that controls everything on your rig is definitely not something that should be overlooked. Yeah. So I guess software aside there, the real advantage that we're highlighting is the fact that these pedals are gonna be part of a much wider ecosystem overall in time. Whereas with the sprint pedals, you are looking at a pedal set and it's only ever really gonna be a pedal set. So in terms of the driving experience, I think we've already covered off a lot of these factors just when we're talking about adjustability and the fact that we were able to achieve the driving feel that we liked on both sets. But having said that, there were a couple of obvious differences between the two as well. Yeah, so I think the, the noise of them is a yep. big difference. So, yep. I mean, the Husing Velts are incredibly quiet. Yeah, quiet as pedals we've ever used, I'd say. Yeah, and by a long shot too, yep. I think. The Fortes, on the other hand, do have, you know, pretty harsh bump stops, yep. don't they? So when you get to the end of your throw, it is metal to metal contact. So I'd say if you're if 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 a really important factor there in terms of your purchasing decision is you know wanting to have as quiet a rig as possible, then the sprints are a really really solid choice there. Mm. If you're driving next door to somebody who's trying to sleep or study or you've got a baby in the house or something like that, then these definitely have a distinct advantage there. And I wouldn't say that they're excessively loud. They're not louder than most other pedal sets that we've tested. True, yeah. It's just that these are really really exceptionally <laughs> yeah, exactly. quiet. Exactly, and they're definitely not so loud that it's an issue for the, for the driver. No, it's more no. if you've yeah, if you've got someone sleeping next exactly. door or something like yeah. that. So, yeah. Exactly. And other than that, when it comes to the driving experience, I think it's really just down to the fact that it is easier to max out the load cell on the sprints than it is on the fortes. And I just think overall, these pedals are more suited to somebody who's driving a wide variety of different cars, from street cars to you know Formula style cars. Needs to be able to adjust between a very soft pedal with a long travel and something that's nice and stiff and short. Whereas with these, they're definitely designed more towards some that likes to have a short throw and a stiffer pedal. That suits me perfectly and I'm really happy with these. Uh, I would choose these pedals over the sprints for my particular driving style, but if I'm driving a lot of street cars and I'm doing a wider variety of different cars, then I think these would probably be the better choice. So it was interesting though, when you first started using the Acertec Invictors, yep. you weren't used to a pedal that stiff, mm -hmm. but you started to realize you know, the benefits of having yeah. a pedal like that. Yeah, and I think that's a really important thing that we can unpack a little bit further is that the fact that you know, there, there is so much subjectivity in what we're talking about here. Some people are gonna prefer a longer travel, some people are gonna prefer a shorter travel, and that's kind of what we've been talking about up to this point. Now there has been a lot of talk since the Acertec pedals were released on what is actually the most authentic. And there's been arguments that, you know, real life race cars do have a long pedal travel. People have been posting videos of, you know, see, look at this, look at this, look how far that, you know, and again, like ultimately it does boil down to subjectivity. People are gonna have different preferences. But having say, said that, I think there are some fundamental elements which are important to driving quickly and consistently. And it makes sense logically that, you know, the less slack that you have in the pedal, like if you're always pushing your pedal down you know, that far to reach the point where you're threshold breaking and everything up to that point is not really giving you any important information or any definition mm. in what you're doing, then it could be argued that that's a waste of time. Like the time it takes you to push your foot down past that is dead time yeah. and you're better off just getting straight to that threshold point. And that's kind of been my mentality with the way I set up my brake pedal yep. since moving across to the Invicta pedals. With other load cell pedals that I tried previously, even though they had the ability to be as stiff perhaps, I was always setting them up a little bit more on the softer side. Mm. So what I found was that when I was forced into a situation where I didn't really have a choice, 
once I set my muscle memory and I kind of adjusted my mentality to suit that style of driving, I did actually find it to be beneficial and faster. So, mm -hmm. and this is something that I recommend to everybody now when they ask me about pedals is I say, you know, try setting them up stiffer. It's gonna be a learning curve. You know, if you're coming from something like, you know, Logitech pedals or Thrustmaster pedals, you know, it is gonna take you a while to match your previous lap times, you mm. know? But that doesn't mean that the softer pedal is necessarily better. Yeah. You just have to take the time to get used to it, so. I think back to when I was using Logitech G920s, I think it was, yeah. and I'd almost just sort of wriggle my toe a little bit to get the pedal in the position <laughs> for braking. It was such a position-based thing. Yeah. And yeah, getting your your mentality and your muscle memory across from, from that to load cell yeah. is a big step in and of yeah. itself. But when you take away all of that travel at the same time, yeah. it just throws your head into a spin. Yeah. But once you push through that, there are the, the benefits. Yeah, right. and I think a lot of people do set up their load cell pedals to operate almost like a potentiometer based or position based pedal. Yeah. Because their their mentality is still relying on the position of the pedal and the amount of pressure that's required to get it to that position mm -hmm. rather than just the amount yeah, of it's pressure. Sort of a hybrid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of like a hybrid kind of setup. Mm -hmm. Whereas with these, there's such little travel there at all. It purely is just down to the amount of pressure yep. that you put on there. So yeah, I would encourage people, regardless of the pedal set that you have, if you have the ability to adjust them, then give give a harder pedal a try. Try it for a couple of hours and just see whether it makes you faster. I found that it did make me faster. I learned something that day. And mm. uh, yeah, that's something that I'll always carry forward. Yeah, I guess the trap that you can fall into if you, you upgrade a set of pedals is that you initially go to try and make them feel similar to what you had before because yeah. that's what you're used to it feels yeah. better to you but then it's like well why did you upgrade yeah it's like what are you actually <laughs> taking advantage of what you've just bought or yeah, are you just exactly. trying to make it feel the same like so yeah get outside the box yeah. break the status quo of your muscle memory definitely but that said you can achieve a more authentic feeling on these pedals for a lot of types of cars yeah. than what you can on these if you're driving a something like a gt3 gt4 formula car then yeah, this feels quite authentic. Yeah. If you're driving an MX-5 or maybe some sort of a street car where you do have a long throw, yeah. then these are gonna have the more authentic feel of the two of them. So then it becomes more of an argument of immersion. If you wanna have the more immersive experience yep. and have yep. the more authentic experience, yep. then maybe this is the better choice. So in a nutshell, yep. what's the final word? Well, the most important thing is that regardless of which direction you go with this, if you are looking at buying one or the other, I don't think that you're gonna be unhappy with either choice. In terms of build quality, they're very, very close. They're both excellent pedals. Pedals. The main concern I have with the sprint pedals is just that 65 kilogram limit for the brake. As I mentioned before, I was very, very, very close to that within a kilogram or two, in fact. So for me and my driving style, the Acetex would be the better choice. But on the flip side to that, if you're wanting to drive a large variety of vehicles, if you're wanting to have a longer travel, then the sprints would be the obvious choice. And if you want the quietest pedals you can get, then the sprints are probably for you. So I really hope that this video has helped you out, guys. If it has, please do leave a thumbs up. As we said before, if you want to pick up either one of these pedal sets, there are some links down in the description below which help us out as well. So thank you very much for your support there. But above all, again, guys, thank you very much for watching. We really appreciate all your support. And if you want to check out any of our other hardware reviews, check out boostedmedia.net linked down in the description. You'll find a massive range of reviews there. And uh, yeah, hopefully this has helped you out, guys. So thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon. Bye. See you.